This is a chemistry class. Now the topic we'll be looking at is the energy and chemical reactions. Because the topic is somehow voluminous, this subtopic we are going to look under it. So because of that, I'm going to divide it into parts. So today we'll be looking at the part one of uh, energy and chemical reactions. Energy changes take place during chemical reaction. All chemical reactions, for a chemical reaction to occur, I've told you before now that bond must be broken and during that process there will be a kind of change in the form of uh, energy so almost all the chemical reaction involves some sort of change in energy it is either energy is being absorbed or energy is given off or released in the form of heat uh, in this under this topic whenever i may mention of uh, energy you know i'm referring to heat so Heat is a form of energy that always flows from an object at high temperature to an object at lower temperature. That is, it can move from the higher temperate region to a kind of lower uh, temperate region. You know, it spreads just like you have in molecules of matter. So they live the area where they are concentrated to the area where they will be a little bit free. So the same thing is applicable to the molecules of uh, heat. So, for instance, if you open the front door of your house in the winter time, the heat flow out, but not vice versa. When you place a piece of ice on the tabletop, it begins to melt until the heat flows. From the surrounding into the ice thereby producing the melting process so in chemistry the energy changes in chemical reaction are studied by a special branch of chemistry known as thermochemistry so thermochemistry is the study of it changes in chemical reaction. You can be asked, what is thermochemistry? So you just see, it is the study of heat changes in chemical reaction. Now to understand this energy changing, first we must define two things, the system and the surrounding. The system is a specific part of the universe on which we concentrate. In chemistry, for example, if you are carrying out an experiment in a beaker, the reaction mixture and the beaker constitute the system. The rest of the universe outside the system is considered as surroundings. Let me expatiate on this. If, for instance, if I want to carry out a reaction, probably, uh, let me say during uh, titration, if I'm titrating uh, the acid against my base in the conical flask, now inside the conical flask, you know, definitely I'll be having the mixture of my acid and the base, then with the indicator. Now, that solution, what I'm having inside the beaker is the system. What is inside the beaker is the system. Then every other thing, the beaker, the table, every other thing that is around that place is known as the surrounding. So that specific reaction I'm carrying out, that thing is called the system. Then every other thing that might aid the process is known as the surrounding. An open system. Now, in this place, when we talk of the system, we have three different types. We have the open system, 
we have the closed system and then we have the isolated system now under the open system the system is open that means the system is open that means there can be exchange of heat and at the same time there can be exchange of mass if you see the explanation here i said an open system is the system that can exchange mass and energy with the surroundings so that means that the system will be open in such a way that mass can be exchanged with the surroundings and at the same time heat that means heat can be passed to the surroundings or absorbed from the surroundings and the same thing applicable to mass but when you talk of a closed system in a closed system it is only it note it is only it that can be exchanged with the surroundings but not mass that means that when you talk of a closed system the mass cannot be exchanged with the surroundings so the mass of whatever you have in that system will be constant but it can be exchanged with the surroundings then we have the last one which is the isolated system now in an isolated system there is no kind of nothing like exchange of anything no exchange of heat and no exchange of uh, mass so it is a, a kind of closed system it is isolated yes so it cannot there is nothing that can be exchanged with the surroundings. The system is completely uh, a kind of uh, uh, insulated. So there is nothing that you can exchange from the beaker to the surroundings. So in terms of these energy changes, you know I said it earlier that energy changes can either be in form of absorbing or what? Giving off. So, and that will take us to our next top, um, topic, which is a uh, exothermic and uh, endothermic reaction. Now, the first one, which is exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction release energy. The release energy may be in form of heat, light, electricity, sound, or chalk waves. Either uh, singly or in combination. Now, what I'm saying here in essence is that in exothermic, it is given off. It is given off by the system to the surroundings. So, in any reaction where it is given off, such reaction is exothermic. Now, if I'm carrying out a reaction in is in a beaker and I want to know if the reaction is exothermic. All I will just do is I will just feel the temperature of the beaker. If I touch and the beaker is hot, then I will know definitely it is exothermic. That is just a simple uh, logic or uh, means of knowing if a particular reaction is exothermic. So that what I will be able to deduce from that is that that particular reaction is given off it. Now, example, mixing of acid and alkali. When you mix acid and alkali together, you know what we call alkali. Uh, and alkali is a base that is soluble in water. Remember, I told you it's not all bases that are soluble in water. Those that are soluble in water are called alkali. So, when you react alkali with a base, definitely it will be released or it will be given up. And that shows a kind of exothermic reaction. Then another example is combustion. All combustion reactions are exothermic. I want to believe by now you know what we call combustion. Okay. Then the next slide is endothermic reaction. In endothermic reaction it is just like the opposite of exothermic in endothermic reaction heat or energy is absorbed from the surroundings to the system remember in exothermic it is released or given off by the system to the surrounding 
but in endothermic it is absorbed from the surroundings into the system now these are some of the example dissolving ammonium nitrate in water then electrolysis of water to form hydrogen and oxygen gas then photosynthesis of chlorophyll plus water and the sunlight to form carbohydrates and oxygen all these ones they absorb it and that shows they are good examples of uh, endothermic